What is up you cool snakes and neonates? It's been too long. I'm so sorry I've not put a video out for a while. I've been ill, I've had a hell of a chest infection and then with Scotland coming out of lockdown I've been quite busy with bookings and stuff like that with the off the scale uh, kids parties and stuff like that with the animals. So I've been finding it quite hard to do all that, maintain the animals and make you guys a video and find the sort of willpower to do it. And once, because like so Hunter's in shed, Shelby's in shed, there's a f uh, milkshake's in shed, once those guys have all shed out and are looking pretty, we will do a full sort of viv by viv tour, you, one of you guys suggested a, a full viv room tour, so we're going to do that, we're going to go viv by viv and you guys are going to see all the animals, whatever it is, 15, 16 or something like that, animals we've got, and uh, we'll go through that, so yeah, let's jump in. <laughs> So I just can't get time. I filmed that intro like two weeks ago and I just get, can't get time to film. So finally everyone's shared out, everyone's sort of done what they need to do. They've been fed, I've got five minutes to film. So let's film a little viv room tour. We'll go around everyone and you can see what's in where and um, how everyone's doing as we go around. Let's get into it. So here is Shelley's enclosure so of course she has this bath it goes all the way under her docking i would like to give her bigger she was only supposed to be temporary then she was going to get rehomed but now you can't rehome turtles so we have to try and make do we're going to try and get her a bigger enclosure made eventually this one does her just fine and um, she has pretty much everything she needs in here she's a happy healthy wee thing so she's doing well shelly is doing fantastic you'll see that she's not got any of that loose skin that she had on her when we first picked her up remember she was looking a bit scabby the only annoying thing is is that AstroTurf, that fake grass, peels off and ends up in her water and clogs up her filter, which she likes to rip off the side of. So. But yes, Shelly is doing absolutely fantastic in her cuteness. And she's shedding her um, shell right now, which is quite cool. Um, didn't realise that, but turtles shed the shoot. Well, I thought they shed their shoots off their shell, but I didn't quite realise, or didn't quite sink in. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And she's doing it fantastically. Um, she loves to hate people and hates to love people. So then next up we have two empty vivs. That's going to be for uh, Boega dendrophilia when it comes along. It won't be t permanent because it's like three foot. Underneath that is a three by one and a half, three by two sort of area. That's going to be Milkshake's final viv, which I don't think she will be long before she goes into. But they are empty right now, other than a colony of moss we've got going. Over here, as you come around, there's Kirsten's hula hoop. We have our sort of bug rack. Um, stick and sex need new um, litter. And the heat in this room is ridiculous, and that privet dries off like instantly. But you can see the Indian stick and sex is in there getting huge, and the black beauty is in there too, somewhere. As you guys can see here, we've put them in sort of a semi-bioactive, there's a family of um, slaters in there, little isopods, and pulled them out of the garden and threw them in there, because stick insects actually put a lot. And here is the little black beauty. It's extremely fast. This is really all difficult doing it one-handed. Unfortunately, Kirsten, because our lockdowns and all that rubbish have been lifted, and Kirsten is back in the office now, so she doesn't have as much free time to um, to help me film. So unfortunately, the uh, a little thing. The, um, the quality of the camera man is going to slack dramatically. But um, this little stick insect will go like velvety black. It will look really good. Um, so it'll go like a velvety black and it'll have these little tiny sort of red wings that come off its back. Won't be able to fly with them, but um, oh um That's a face there only a mother could love I reckon But still a cool little bug nonetheless. 
nice little close up there of a gothic black beauty stick insect and their buddies in there well there's the Indian and their buddies in there so I'm going to put the hide back in I'm going to throw this um, trivet in so they've got fresh leaves to munch on and there we have some nice at home stick insects they seem to have like a first shed kind of get rid of a baby skin kind of thing when they come out of the egg so they seem to have this first shed and once they've had that shed they just explode in growth I mean look how big that Indian's getting already absolutely crazy these guys are fine to house together and we've done a lot of research on that and they are absolutely perfectly fine unfortunately we've got like a dozen eggs of each and only one of each eggs um actually hatched so there we go um but these guys can reproduce asexually i think is the correct term so if it's a female we won't need a mate if we have if we're lucky enough to have two females if not we'll just get a bunch of grown-on babies and throw them in and we'll get a colony going but as for how it still is, we only have one each. These cool containers here, um, Kirsten ordered off of Amazon. You guys can get these off Amazon quite cheap. You sort of build them up yourself. But they are really nice containers. Loads of ventilation, so they'll be good for species that like a lot of ventilation. All that kind of thing. Um, next up, we have the Martinique Pink Toe. Uh, refused its last feed, so it's probably going to go into molt soon. Which is nail biting if you've ever kept Martinique Pink Toes. Because... Um, they often die molting going from sort of, I think, sling to juvie. Um, yeah, so they can have problems. So it's going to be a nail biting thing when that one molts out. Uh, next up, we have our little girl Buttercup, who is a P. regalis. Excuse the rust that's come off there, that's absolutely awful. But this is our P. regalis, her name is Buttercup. She's still in her sling sort of coloration and all that kind of stuff. He's um, barely grown, but doing really well. Which is why I think that's a girl and this is a boy, because they were about the same size when they came to us. And look at the size difference. So this is Evie. It's a shame Evie's not belly up on the glass right now, because she's starting, or he, I think, is starting to get the yellow coloration in those front legs, which is really cool. He's in the same size tub as the stick insects in there. But, um, yeah, so that is Evie. And then up top here, we have Curly Whirly. So she's doing fantastic, showing a little bit pink on top of her abdomen, so she might be going into molt as well. And the plan for the kids' parties is if I'm not using if the spider if curly whirly is in molt, then the Indian's now probably big enough that I could just use that at a kids' party instead of the spider, just in case. But uh, yeah, and then there's our coat, our uh, green colony of dubia roaches there, and there's all their babies. I think we've got like 50 babies off of them so far. Um, yeah, there's our sort of 50 odd um, dubia babies in there. They actually are really good for feeding the Martinique pink to them. Believe it or not, she demolishes them and destroys them. There's the shoots off the, the turtle's shell, and she's shedding her shell. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I like that. Quite awesome. And then if we go over to the other side of the room, we have Yoshi in here. Our leopard gecko who is sleeping right now but this is his abode that is where he's sleeping then down here we have a very keen to come out milkshake now of course the camera does not pick up her colors and i think the light on top of the camera doesn't help matters but come on you little racer but look at the size that milkshake is getting she is i don't know if the camera's going to pick up this difference in size but she is putting on the beef. She is about twice as thick as when we first got her. Um, and, oh, she's just growing like a weed. She's growing fantastically. So before long, she'll be in that three foot, which will probably be her permanent home, that three by two. There's Alita tantruming in the background, wanting out. Your spotlight moment will come. So yeah, that is Milkshake, the banana California king snake. She is lovely. Like I say, the camera never actually picks up her yellowness. It always makes her look more white um, for some odd reason. But she is beautiful, especially with that little sugar skull at the top of her head there. She's got that little sugar skull. It's awesome. She's a beautiful king snake. I love a good king snake. We do dare you know, he loves a good king snake. And then she has the tire track underneath as well, the solid black belly. And that is her house in there. She does have some uh, cleanup crew in there with her too. Put a lot of cleanup crew in with her and the false water cobras, but a lot of them drowned themselves. So they didn't do too great. 
So that is Milkshake's house down there too. That's her two foot by whatever that is, one and a half or something, I'm not sure. Those are two two foots, but eventually there will only be one two foot getting used and that will just be for Yoshi the Leopard Gecko. So we come around the corner, we now have the boa stack. This is the stack of boas. Um, in the bottom down here, we have Marley, the common boa. He's over six and a half foot. He's a big boy. And these are four by two foot stacks. Um, it will be built into a five foot stack soon. There's a lot of viv making going to be made, done over the next two years. Um, making five foot stacks and bigger six foots and things like that at the other side and things. So there is a lot of plans and stuff like that going on. Um, up above him, we have the true red tail boa, the surname red tail boa. Boa constrictor. So the common boa is boa imperator. Above it is the boa constrictor. Um, Boa Imperator is commonly misnamed as a red tail boa or boa uh, constrictor. But this here is your true red tail. This is my boy. He was at holiday at a friend of mine's for a wee while. But he has come back. Jeez, oh, Lita. What a racket to make. This is my pride and joy. Just look at that animal there. He's doing fine. He's about four over, yeah, he's about four foot, I think he is. Beautiful animal. And that's his home. It's simple just now, but like I say, I'm not going to overcomplicate with it because it's only a four foot and he will get a five foot by two, two and a half foot or something like that in the future as his sort of final home. Um, these four foots, this four foot stack will be thrown away. I will make five, uh, three matching five foot, so they're four foot, so another five foot by about the same. And um, that one, of course, is bit smaller than the rest so I'll probably sell or throw out half of those and um, like I say there'll be a five foot stack goes in there because we have the room now because we got rid of that corner sofa so we have plenty of walk-in room now especially to extend these guys and get these guys a nice big home see so yeah, that's him in there most of the animals have UV lights and um, even the snakes even if they don't need it and um, Lilith doesn't have a UV light yet, but she will do. Um, she has her own private juice. No, that's mine. Mmm, yummy. <coughs> so next up in the boa wall, we have the Dummerel's boa. Scientific name is Acranthophus Dummerelli. He's an awesome animal. Love her to bits. This is my girl. Something special. Put her down on the floor like Mordecai and you guys can get a good look at her. How beautiful is that snake? And she's a very slow growing snake, but she is definitely growing. <coughs> that is a stunning snake right there. Just beautiful. So that was Lilith, our Dummel's boy. Turn around from Lilith. Onto the other stock, we have this lovely quiet tegu, um, Alita, or Argentinian black and white tegu. How are you doing, sillies? Um, we're just drawing up plans right now to give her an eight foot viv. She's in a six by three. Um, I'm just drawing up plans just now to give her an eight by three, which construction will probably start next week, I would think. Add to my massive list of things to do. Hello, pretty girl. Hello, my beautifuls. There you go, because we're not pooping on Dad's carpet while Dad's got things to do. Okay? No, we're not pooping on Dad's carpet while Dad's got things to do. You can stay in there. So that's her house. Um, she has been tearing up her, her uh, foam tree. Um, so she won't be getting a foam feature in her new one. Um, she might get something, but it certainly won't be made of foam that she can dig up. So when she comes out of there, that tree will be repaired to cover up any of the exposed foam on that root that I made. And then... Um, There'll be a snake of some kind. We'll go in here afterwards. A nice big six by three for maybe one of the false water cobras when they're an adult or something like that. We're not sure. It might be the male might go in here and then the female will go in the, the taller six by three that'll be getting made as well. But 
there is a litre. As you see, I put clean water in that today, and this is Pegu ownership. That was clean literally a couple of hours ago. Love them or hate them, usually you hate them. <sighs> Above her is Hunter, the Burmese python. Python vivitatis. Take him out. Just for a wee hello. Hunter. He's about six foot eight or something like that. It's over six foot anyway. A Burmese python. He's got a bit of growing left to do. He's about two years old. He's coming up for two years old, I think. And uh, he's an absolute sweetheart. He's a lovely snake. Um, doing really well. Um, use him for the kids' parties and all that kind of stuff. But um, absolutely beautiful snake. He's a little bit dark just now in coloration, but he has just shed, so it's not because of shed. But he is a little bit dark. But yeah, that is our boy Hunter, the Bur Burmese python. And that is his home. Then above him, we have the two cobras. False water cobras. Of course, not true cobras before any of the false water cobra page get their panties in a bunch about them not being hot. We don't, they're not hot. Yeah, I know, I say in every video they're not hot. Some people can't see past the thumb, they only get all over excited and they get all their wee panties in a bunch and stuff. So, these are not true cobras. They are not venomous. You will not die from a bite. Um, but they think you will sometimes. But these guys, as you can see, before I was hooking and things like that, look, we don't even have to hook. There's no hooding or nothing. So this is the boy. Now he is quite sort of tangerine in colouring, which is pretty cool. The people in the False Water Cobra were loving that, that he has like a tangerine colour. Of course, the camera never really picks it up, but he's doing fantastic. So you're not keen on being one-handed. There you go. You can see a bit of that tangerine coloration there, actually. But he is beautiful. And the False is, as you can see, he has plenty of space in there. Falsies like plenty of space, unlike a lot of snakes that sort of freak out when you give two of them. Um, it's good to give them space. That's like a, a five by three, so it's basically a two by three that he's got in there. Um, he's away back in his No, don't go away. I like how he doesn't have a lot of black on his tail. Like the female's tail is nearly completely black all the way down, but his has like tiger stripes all the way to the very end. So he's a really pretty animal. Um, we were going to sell him. But we've decided, I think, to keep them, and these two are going to be future breeders for us. Now, I don't know if they're related. Uh, he was born in September, she was born in June of last year, but um, that doesn't mean that they're separate parents, because they can double clutch. Oh, you giving dad a hood. Are you giving dad a hood? Look at you with your hoodings and stuff, thinking you're a big scary cobbers. Yes, again, they're not a cobra, but it's always fun to say cobra, isn't it? So here is the little girl. It's not easy handling these guys one-handed. They're both handling down fantastically. They're doing really well. They've never even thrown a bite. She gave me a tail whip last night. That was the first time ever. But um, I think I'd sort of annoyed her the night before a little bit. We had guests around and I was tickling the back of her head getting her to hood for them. But um, oh, it's raining outside. Oh, the kids' pool's still outside. Um, but yeah, she is doing fantastic. Like both the false water cobras have settled down. She's in what would be like a three by three kind of situation, maybe even a bit more. Um, but yeah, so this will be her whole viv. But as you can see, the five foot is just short of the six foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend that five foot and make it as, because there's enough spare glass in between them to actually you reuse that glass and make that whole five foot into a six foot and it's a lot taller than my six foots that I built so um, it will get, uh, that will be her house it will be like a six by three by three kind of thing and uh, that will be her house but yeah she's beautiful, you can see she's not as tangerine as him she's a lot more ghost like, she's a lot paler which is really cool and um, feeding them is always fun. I'm gonna get a video. I'm gonna get a video of them being fed for you guys. You can see she's got a lot more dark on her tail than like him, whereas he's like tiger stripes all the way down. But how beautiful. Is that animal? Nice big hood. She's getting ready to tail up. See how she's arching that back up there. 
He's like, come near me, I'm going to whip you with my tail. That's the worst she ever does, or any of them, that's the worst any of them ever do, is give you a tail whip. The hood at you, give you a wee tail whip, and that's it. Absolutely fantastic animals, and you're going to love working with these guys, and I really do. So there you have it guys, there is your 6 foot stack, 4 foot stacks, your spiders and your turtle. So guys, like I said, I am really sorry about the length of time between videos but I've had a lot going on and I've been sick, Kirsten's went back to work so I don't have the sort of camera lady um, which makes things tricky and all that stuff so I've got loads of work to do at home of course with us coming out of lockdown as well my sort of business with the kids parties has like taken off and things like that so I've got a lot to do with that I've just had so much going on it's been so hard to like film and edit and get everything done get everything out there because I'm just so exhausted I just don't have the energy to do it and I don't want to have to put videos out and then lose my love for the animals because it becomes like a chore and um, I still like to enjoy my animals and stuff like that but I'm going to Hopefully we're sort of got in a routine now. Hopefully I can get you guys filmed and edited and stuff on certain days and still you got get you guys in a video every weekend. I'm not doing the live stream on Thursday nights now, but I might do a live stream through the day on a Thursday. Um while Kirsten's at work. And it'll just be me and you guys through the day. Um we'll maybe try that out. I'll maybe do a live stream next Thursday and we'll see how we go, see if we get people in. Because you guys know I'm Scotland, I'm UK, so if I'm doing a live stream through the day when everyone's at work, I don't know if everyone's going to see it and be able to join in, but if more of you guys that are around the world are able to tune in and see it, that's cool, awesome. So we'll try that out and we'll see how it goes. So guys, as always, thank you very much for tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment, even while I've not been posting videos, you guys have still been subscribing. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Keep that up because it helps me out, especially being such a small channel. It helps me out tremendously. And I promise I'm going to try and get back to the weekly videos and we're going to get back to these regular videos. So thank you very much for tuning in. Take it easy. Peace.